Hello and uh, welcome everyone to this course on how to create an approval workflow application with Caspio. My name is Ned, I am a technical evangelist here and in this video series I will teach you how to create an application from scratch that incorporates many Caspio features and how do we go about creating an application from start to finish. Let's take a quick look at the agenda on how the video lectures are divided. In part one, which is this overview video, I will give you a live demo of the application so that you have a good understanding of what you will be creating and what you will have created by the time you're done with this course. In part two, I will teach you how to create all the database tables and how to establish relationships between the tables by joining primary keys to foreign keys. In part three, I will teach you how to join tables together using views, how to properly set up a view to filter out different users and their unique roles, and how to create login screens for users to be able to access the application. In part four, which will be the bulk of our video content, I will show you how to create user folders and all the application interfaces, or as they refer to inside Caspio, data pages. And finally, in part five, I will teach you how to deploy the entire application to a website so your end users will have the ability to interact with the live application. If you have a desire of knowing how to use Caspio or knowing how to build an application in general, then I hope to quote unquote see you in all of these lectures. You'll have a lot of fun, you'll learn how to use Caspio, and hopefully you'll be able to expand upon this application or even build your own unique application for your own business or project. So let's begin. I put together a flowchart for this course to explain the workflow of the application and what I would like to do is go back and forth between my flowchart and the live example so that you can see exactly what we plan on developing in this course. Let me give you a quick rundown on what this application is about. If you look on the leftmost column, you'll see that we have the ability to log in as a customer. And for customers, we created limited functionality where we allowed them to submit a request for service. Now after submission, if you follow the arrow, you will see that the service reps will be able to log in and pick a request and also assign the request to themselves. After assigning it, they'll be able to manage the request and submit the request for approval. Upon submission, the request should now be visible in the approving manager's dashboard. From here, the approving manager really has three options on how he or she can deal with that request. We can decline the request, approve the request, or have the request be resubmitted for approval. If we choose to have the request be resubmitted for approval, it's going to go back to the service rep where they'll be able to make additional modifications to it and once again be able to resubmit that request for approval. And just by looking at this illustration, you can see a nice cycle of what happens to a request when it goes back and forth between the approving manager and the service rep. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this type of a workflow. In our example, we chose a use case that deals with technicians going out in the field and performing a service for customers but you can very easily modify this application for your own needs and apply it to many different types of use cases or workflows. So now what I would like to do is go back and forth between this flowchart and the live example so that you can follow along in the workflow and understand exactly what we plan on creating in this course. So let's go ahead and log in as a customer. And in my example, my sample user for customer is gonna be Ken. And as soon as I log in as Ken, what you'll notice is we have that ability to submit a request for service. And as I mentioned before, in our use case, we're using technicians to go out in the field and perform that service. And the type of services that we have in this example is we can do a new install, we can do troubleshooting, or we can do cancellations. So let's say, for example, a customer wants to do a cancellation. They can add some notes. We'll just put NA for now and click on Submit. Upon submission, you get to see the confirmation message. So now the next step is for the service rep to be able to log in and find that request. So let me go back to my flowchart. Now the next step is for the service rep, as I just mentioned, to be able to log in and pick that request that just came in. So let's go back to the application. What I'll do is I'll log out as the customer, and I'm going to log in as the service rep, who in my example, it's going to be Tyler. And when Tidal logs in, I'm going to be able to see a report that shows me all of the new requests that are coming in. And this report here is actually filtering data or filtering these requests that are flagged as new. And if I want to assign this request to myself as Tyler, I can select that request. I can click on this link here at the top. And very simply, all I need to do is change the status from new to pending review. 
Once I select pending review and click on update, you'll notice that the report is no longer going to show that request because again, this report is only filtering requests that are flagged as new. Once you update the status, now you need to build a different report that's going to filter out all the ones that are showing pending review requests. Now as Tyler, I should be able to manage this request. So in my navigation menu, I can go to manage requests. And once again, there's that same request, but now this request is pending review and this report is going to filter out all the requests that are flagged as pending review or the ones that need to be resubmitted for approval. So this one that's pending review, I can click on the details link. And now as the service rep, I have additional things that I can do to this request. I can add some internal notes. Once again, just to save on time, we're gonna put NA. I can add some additional appointment notes. I'll just put NA and I can set the appointment date, let's say for this Saturday. And if I want to be able to submit the request for approval to the approving manager, all I need to do is change the status to submit it for approval. Click update. And notice how I no longer see that request in this report. Why? Because this request now, we changed the status from pending review to submit for approval. So now the next step is for the approving manager to be able to log in and find that request. So let's go back to our flowchart because I do want to show you that once that request is submitted, it's now going to end up in the bucket for the approving manager where they can decline the request, approve it, or resubmit for approval. And let's go back to our live example. Let's go ahead and log out as the service rep. And let's log in as the approving manager. Who in our example is going to be Jane. And when Jane logs in, she's going to be able to see a report that filters out all the requests that are flagged as submitted for approval. And here's their cancellation. Not only can we see who the request came from, which is Ken Wiles, we can also see who is the assigned rep that's handling that request. Now when I go to details as Jane, you will notice that Jane has three options here. I can approve the request, decline the request, or have the request be resubmitted for approval. And I can also add additional comments as the manager. So if I say resubmit for approval, and I can tell the service rep here, you need to add additional appointment notes. Click on update. Jane no longer sees that request because it's been resubmitted for approval. So let's go ahead and log out as Jane. And let's log in once again as Tyler, who is the service rep in our example. And once I go to manage requests, I'm gonna be able to find that request that's been resubmitted for approval by Jane. And remember what I said before, this report is going to filter all the requests that are flagged as either pending review or resubmit for approval. So now as Tyler, I can go in here and I can find all the comments provided by the manager. I can add my additional notes. And once again, I can submit that for approval and click update. And let's just complete the process. Let's go back in as Jane. We're going to log out. Log in as Jane. Once again, I can find that request. Assuming, of course, that Tyler provided those additional appointment notes, I'm going to go to details. And this time, all I'm going to do is say request approved. Change my notes. Thank you for providing additional notes. And click on update. Once the request is approved, let's go back and log in as Tyler one more time. We have an additional bucket in our navigation menu here that shows me all of the ones that have been flagged as approved or declined. So if I click on this link, I'm gonna see an additional report that shows me all the requests that have been approved and all the requests that have been declined. And here is the one that was just approved by the approving manager. We can go to details. And what you'll notice down below is we have the request approved. We see who was the approving manager to approve that request. We can see additional notes and we know when that was last updated. So this is the application that I'm going to show you how to develop inside Caspio. Of course, there are many ways to go about creating this workflow inside Caspio. Sometimes it really just depends on personal preference. I'm gonna show you one method, but that doesn't mean that that's the only method that you can do this inside Caspio. But what's great about it is you're going to be able to log in. You're going to learn how easy it is to use Caspio. Everything that we do inside the platform uses a point-and-click methodology. There is no coding in Caspio. 
you might have some limited coding here and there, but that is actually very easy to do in CASPU as well. And you're going to learn a little bit of that today in today's course. So I hope to see you in part two. There I'm going to show you how to build your tables and how to establish relationships between your tables by joining foreign keys to primary keys. Thanks for watching part one and I hope to see you in part two.